way to sort of frame this conversation is that uh, strategy is a tool, uh, the way I'm talking about it here. It's something that you can go uh, and help change your organization with because, partly because it's the way that organizations are used to being changed and they like to see a plan. I know that there's a certain um, resistance to grand planning uh, at the beginning of this conference. Um, <laughs> I'm going to kind of slightly disagree with that here today and I think that um, the reason for that is that although uh, you know we're uh, in this room been talking about sort of change when change is hard to achieve, uh, you know I think I think plans like this can include the methodology for change, but not necessarily all of the the uh, intervening steps. And so your strategy might just be that we're going to change our style, and then we're going to go forward and do things in a different way. Or it might be very concrete. We have two years to change everything about ourselves. Here is the list of projects in the order that they're going to happen, uh, and so on and so forth. So different ways of doing it, and obviously people in this room have develop things like this in the past, they will have their own experiences of it, they will have their own experiences of where they are in their own kind of grand plans at the moment and what's working and what isn't and I think it's probably useful given you know the way that the last 20 minutes has gone, I wasn't here yesterday either, but like to have people start chipping in as they go and say well this didn't work for me, this did, what about this, try this, try this, so let's try and keep it kind of um, interactive and open, there'll be a couple of examples but you know if it's just about like I think this is a useful tool, I'm going to make a case for why I think organisations should do it and um, uh, we'll see how we go. So, um, just a little intro uh, for those who don't know who we are. So Blue State Digital is a, an agency and a technology company that tries to help our clients create change in the world. So both in their own organizations, uh, in the marketplace, we work with, a, you know, not just with the charity sector, but we work all the way into the, into the corporate sector as well, and society more broadly. So we work on political campaigns, we work with unions, we work with uh, other membership organizations like art galleries and cultural institutions. We work with you know, sports teams, we work with, uh, you know, with some corporates doing CSR work and things like that. So we work across a really broad range of, of organisations and we're just always trying to get people to take action. We want people to use digital things to get people doing more. It's a fairly uh, simple thing. And we want people to invest in the relationships they can build over digital. So you know, one of the really nice things about digital is the ability to you know, build relationships with people over time, to do that at some sort of scale. How does an organisation start to do that when you know, the numbers we're talking about here are very different to you know, dealing with 100,000 supports here and 100,000 supports there. How do we use digital to manage the relationships at scale? Uh, and as I said, we do that for a, a real range of clients. So I want to define uh, strategy uh, as I see it. And so it's a very simple definition the way I, I, I've been kind of presenting it. So uh, first is the current state. You know, so the current state is George, hap George Osborne is happy and confident. You know, the economy is doing better. George Osborne is uh, smiling and looking that nice little bit of smug that George Osborne likes to do. Um, and, you know, so that's where we are. Where do we want to get to? Well, we want to get to George Osborne isn't so sure. So um, uh, that's, uh, you know, that's our position. Current state, future state, and we're going to get there because of sexy Ed Balls. Uh, so sexy Ed Balls is the plan that is going to destabilise George Osborne's happy state uh, and take him to another place. So um, uh, it's a bad analogy, but, like, the process here is, like, everyone here is sexy Ed Balls, and you just need to fixate on that image for just a few seconds. I think the gives it away. Yeah. Um, so one of the reactions to this uh, sort of digital strategy thing and one of the reactions from yesterday is we just don't need one of those. So one of the debates that organisations have is, well, there's no such thing as that anymore. You know, uh, we just have a business strategy, have a business plan. Digital isn't really separate from that. You know, we don't have an electricity strategy is this line that you hear people say over and over again. You know, it's all, it's all just a sort of conduit for something. And I think in the future that's absolutely true. But um, I don't think most organisations are there. I mean, the classic line about the future is it's here already, but it's unevenly distributed. You have to look at uh, your organisation and work out whether you need a separate plan or whether that's something that's integrated into the overall business plan or you're coming to a new cycle as an organisation and you're about to start over again. Uh, what can you do there? Um, some people have very simple plans. You know, if you're starting from nothing, it's obviously much easier to say we will, you know, we will test and iterate and move forward project by project. If you're starting where I suspect most people here are starting, you have a big infrastructure, you have a way of working, you have some complexity uh, to it. Um, you know, if you take, um, you know, the Obama campaigns, which we worked on, and, um, uh, you know, the digital strategy there was very simple. It was we have a fundraising target, go and make us several hundred million dollars and uh, a line to go with it, which was give our people the best experience of this election they can have today. And that was it. That was the, the, over, you know, the only written down guiding principle for that organization as they move forward. Now they had loads of tactics and they lived in the day and they adapted and moved forward and tested and improved and everything. But there was no 20 page guiding document signed off by the higher ups. Uh, you know, the strategy was digital sits at the top table Digital gets to make decisions, provided digital hits its fundraising targets. And that was, that was it. So 
you know, some very noteworthy organizations have very, very simple plans, very simple strategies. They're able to encapsulate what they want to do in a very small way, and you don't need to go through a huge uh, organizational effort to kind of understand where you are, where you need to get to, and how you're going to get there. Uh, again, other people aren't like that, and they need different versions of it. So, um, you know, I think it's fine to be skeptical of grand plans. I think some organizations can avoid having grand plans. Um, but, you know, in the end, I think people do, you know, mostly need a plan. And so the reason I think people probably need plans is because most people are starting with something already and they need to change it rather than just build it from scratch. And I think, um, you know, as, as with the George Osborne plan, you know, you need to know where you are, where you want to get to and how you're going to get there. Uh, and you need some sort of roadmap for that. And those roadmaps to like execute on them can take a really long time in charities, you know, and take a really long time. You know, it starts with people. It takes a long time to hire good people. It takes a long time to get the budget for those people. It takes a long time to sell in the idea that you should be hiring those people in the first place, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, I don't think we're talking about 10 year digital uh, strategies. I think that's, a, you know, a, a faintly ridiculous thing. We have no idea what the future looks like that far out. But, you know, I think a two year plan is a reasonable time frame for an organization to say uh, that's big enough that we can get really substantial things done but you know over a year perhaps it's rather easier to set your sights a little bit lower and not be quite so ambitious and sort of use the fact that you can almost define it a little bit better to uh, to not be quite so uh, so um, targeted in what you're trying to do um, and the other thing is it's just the currency of organizations you know the organizations we've worked with they need written down plans they need to take it to boards they need to take it to all sorts of advisors it needs to go through the organization at different levels uh, again that plan might ultimately just say we're going to test and iterate, and if you can get everyone to buy into that and work in that way in the moment, that's a fantastic thing. Um, other people, it's we need a big list of you know, budgeted, costed, timed projects, the resources needed to make that happen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and all the stuff that you're probably dealing with much more uh, uh, kind of frequently in your organizations. And so you know, over the last year or so, we've done that for Plan UK, for Girl Guiding, but also some different types of organizations trying to give people different experiences. So. Uh, the Labour Party is a political organisation, obviously, uh, you know, they have an election to win, there's a day they're working towards, and maybe their campaign uh, plan is a bit more similar to, to the Obama one. But the Royal Albert Hall, the Natural History Museum, uh, the GLA, the Great London Authority in London, and people like that. So people have different things to communicate, different things they want people to do. Um, but ultimately, you know, organisationally, they needed a plan, and they needed someone to own that plan and drive it through. So the second point I want to make is that you can do it yourselves, but I think there is some value, and I might say this, so like, you know, whatever, but having external people help you with it. Um, you know, they aren't always perfect, the relationships aren't always great, but the point of it is, and it's actually one of the points that was sort of being talked about this morning about, you know, oh, they're, they're a consultant and I can see their point of view. Um, you know, I do believe there's a level of discomfort at which pro productive work gets done. There is a sort of a need to not shrink back and say, don't worry, I'm the consultant, but to challenge and provoke and perhaps have conversations that don't happen in an organization, in an organization uh, naturally. I mean, when you were talking, there's, there's a book I read a few years ago by a guy called um, Ron Heifetz, his name is, and he totally believes in this level of like, you've got to find the note in the room where everyone's resonating and that everyone is focused on the work and it's this sort of so -called social psychology of productivity. It's really uh, interesting book and I, you know, I went to his class and it's one of the most uncomfortable experiences of my life. You have a room full of people crying <laughs> because he's managed to, you know, he really works the room to find this level of like, you know, sort of uh, what he describes as productive work in the room. It's this sort of social psychiatry, social psychology thing. It's, it's worth a look. But, you know, there's something of the consultant's model in that. It's like, how do you find the place at which an organization is prepared to challenge itself, uh, but also direct its fire on you? And how do you, you know, whether you're an internal consultant or an external one, hold that, hold that fire and kind of work with it? Um, but, you know, the best way, you know, the best, most productive way we've done these things is to work with a very good internal stakeholder as well. So someone who can very much help guide you around the organization, warn you about the pitfalls you're about to fall into, you know, show you the audiences that you need to go and present this thing to internally, to guide you through all of the information you need and so on. Uh, and in fact, the most recent one, and she's left now because she heard this yesterday, was with, with Girl Guiding, Joe from Girl Guiding, was that, you know, we ended up writing the final document together collaboratively in a single Google Doc. So that, you know, in a completely transparent way with four or five people from our organization, four or five people from their organization, complete visibility of what was happening, editing in real time, and just generally sharing the ideas and everything that, building on the framework we'd kind of established together. So um, you can do it yourselves. I think it can make change harder at times, but, you know, you have to kind of weigh up the costs and benefits of, uh, uh, of doing that. Uh, what do you need to know? I mean, so this is the George Osborne is uh, happy and smug part of it. 
there are, again, lots of digital, lots of frameworks for consulting, lots of frameworks for understanding this stuff. I mean, the main point is to know the current state, and that's across, um, you know, wider objectives and strategy. What's the organization ultimately trying to achieve in the world? You know, there's no reason why digital can't be very, <laughs> it doesn't have to achieve digital objectives. It can achieve those real objectives, you know, and how do you get them, your objectives as close to that as possible? Um, so, you know, the wider strategy for doing that, the values they hold, what are the, what's the brand, uh, the structure and the staff and the skills of the organization. You know, the people are the next or perhaps the most important thing. I mean, the, the, you know, the organization is the vessel that carries this whole thing through time, but the people are the stuff, the people who get things done. Are those people the right people? Have they got the right things? Are they reporting in the right way? You know, it's very much a, you know, a consultant's job to have a look at uh, that type of stuff. If you're just focused on, you know, at the sort of platform and execution level, you aren't necessarily enabling that organization to make the change that it should to make success. So it's one of the things we've learned. We did, you know, when we started off, we would write these things like, here are the list of projects you need to do. And increasingly, we help people work out who's where, you know, what are they sitting, what's their viewpoint, are they doing it the right way, um, uh, and those sorts of things. Next thing you want to look at is audiences. You always want to know who you're targeting all your work at. You know, what, what are the different people you're trying to enable to do things? Very, very important. So with Girl Guiding, you know, it was 100 different, over 100 different people we interviewed. Uh, different stakeholder interviews, staff, volunteers, girls are part of all of the, all of the units, uh, talking to them directly, uh, you know, what do you need, what do you want, why are you in this thing all together, what do you like, what don't you like, um, you, know, uh, you know, 100 hours of, of um, interviews. For the Royal Albert Hall, you know, surveys, thousands of customers getting surveyed and asked, what do you think, how's this going to work for you, what would you like to see happen, what could make us better? Uh, other things that can be included systems. You spend some time looking at the actual technology. It can just be a project that's kind of recommended by a strategy. But again, it's useful to know like what the tools people have. How are they using them? Are they working for them? Uh, is everyone unhappy? You come to work every day and you have to use Lotus Notes. Um, you know, uh, it's not a good thing. Um, and people don't go home, home happy. So it can be very simple things about uh, making people uh, happier in their work. And then you can get into the channels level. Like, let's have a look at you know, the website, the email, the social, uh, and all the rest of it. And that can take a really long time to go through all of this stuff and understand it, you know, a month, couple of months uh, to get all of this work done. So at that point, you know, you have all of this information, you hopefully know where you are, but it's kind of unordered, right? You have this sort of unfiltered, unordered pile of stuff and you look at it and it looks kind of terrifying and it's the sort of, you know, the, un the unsorted inbox. And so the first job is to try and create some sort of bigger picture out of it. I mean, that's the way we try and work with these things is to try and guide you, uh, you know, guide an organization towards, you know, something that's hopefully very audience focused, things that people want. So for girl guiding, um, well, so for girl guiding, that's, that was three things. So hopefully you can see that, but it was involve girls, uh, enable volunteers and, champ <laughs> and champion the movement. So there's sort of three different audiences, quite organizational, this particular strategy. I mean, it's not a particularly digital strategy in the way it's written. But none of those things are things that you can't achieve through digital. And they're kind of written because she's gone in the absence of a, of a, of a wider organizational strategy at this stage. Like they needed something that would kind of set the line that they were trying to work towards and, uh, and move from there. And so actually, this is worth looking at. This is digital.girlguiding.org.uk, which is Sorry, the digital.girlguiding.org.uk. So they, they founded a blog that is essentially tracking through over the next two years the implementation of the strategy. So it's got the principles there, and uh, we'll be asking lots of questions and giving people access to alpha versions and you know, tests and uh, you know, asking them about the communications they receive and all that sort of stuff. And I'll be going through that process and hopefully making that really transparent and telling the story of that uh, happening as it does. So this vision is the sort of guiding, you know, is that first guiding point. It's that thing into the future that you wanna, you wanna look at and you wanna go and grab. Um, and so then you start putting everything into some sort of order. You're essentially saying, well, you know, again, back to that framework again. It's like, let's sort everything. We've got staff. We've got skills. We've got systems. We've got processes. We've got you know, the governance for this. We've got the technology we have. We've got our users. We've got our budgets. And you're starting to put everything into these categories and sort everything out. Um, and then you want to start planning your route. Essentially, then you start looking at the gaps. Where can we, you know, what projects can take us from this point on people to this point on people. Our, you know, our current team is one person. They're doing great. They're ready to step up. They're ready to lead a team. We need to hire two more. Is that the answer there? We need to retrain them here. We need to uh, you know, give them some new tools because everything's changed and moved on. Um, you know, so for Girl Guarding, that is like, you know, the obvious thing. They haven't rebuilt their website in 10 years. Uh, it's looking rather 
dated, it doesn't work as well as it can for girls and volunteers. Um, you know, literally some of the, the girls' websites, like the Brownies website, was built by like a volunteer in an evening, you know, five years ago or something. And it's just not reflective of the experience that they're providing offline, which is completely fantastic. So how do they, again, match their amazing offline experience to the online one? Well, they're going to build some new websites. They're going to revamp the comms, which are very confusing. You get lots of comms from different parts of the organization, different levels. It doesn't make any sense to, to most people. And just tell a better story overall of like where they want to go as an organization. And so site, email, and comms, and the volunteer platform, which is the one that you kind of go in and you administer your guiding unit from all getting a big overhaul over the next two years. For them, that's an incredibly ambitious time frame. They've resourced it in an incredibly ambitious way. Um, uh, you know, uh, really interesting. And, and when Joe is back, hopefully for the next session, you should uh, ask her questions about it. I think the other thing that's really interesting is about how you, you kind of like um, oversee these things and sort of stay in the moment and keep executing on it in an ongoing way. Um, you know, girl guiding is full of, to go back to that example, but girl guiding is full of committees and subcommittees and. Um, you know, lots of people coming in on the weekends. Every weekend there are these huge meetings where people are coming from all over the country to talk about specific issues and specific areas of responsibility. And we actually, rather than trying to remove those, created some more, so some with specific responsibility for getting this digital strategy uh, executed. And so that means that volunteers have their input. It means that girls themselves have their input. Um, you know, guiding unit leaders uh, have, their, have their input. Um, and so there's this sort of hierarchy that comes from sort of executive management in the organization who will check in quarterly to Joe's team who will check in monthly and, you know, do that. There's a comms team that sits below that that looks at the whole communications project. How's that going? So, you know, all the stuff you'll be used to in, in your organizations, but quite a lot of oversight and quite a lot of check-ins and quite a lot of transparency about what's happening. Because I don't think if you were, you know, you were to run this, you know, I won't say the budget, but this is a sizable budget project over a couple of years without that kind of transparency, uh, I don't think it would work for the organization. I don't think it would be um, the most effective way for that to happen. So the, other, the next point is about selling in digital strategy um, um, and how you do that around an organization. So no one shares anything on Google+, but Google+, is a really good analogy for how we found it effective to share, in, uh, share, share these things around organizations. So you know, for the finance team, they really wanted to see thick, wadge of paper, costed, timed, uh, all the rest of it. Now, that's a document that's going to last one meeting. They sign off on the budget, and you throw away the first, the, the last 38 pages, and leave the the two that are there, which are the vision, the guiding principles, and the list of projects that are going to happen in the time frame. They're going to happen. You know, you put the meeting, the calendar meetings, in to the people who are going to attend the uh, the uh, you know the sort of check-in meetings and so on, and then you sort of, sort of leave it to work itself. Um, you know, when you're going to make staffing changes, if you have the power to make that, those are incredibly sensitive things to think about. You know, you really have to work very hard as an organization to plan how you're going to hire, how you're going to change things. Uh, you know, the audience for that is not the completely transparent public uh, digital strategy where you, uh, you, you kind of lay all of that out. And then again, you know, this, this blog, for example, you know, how do I show this to the whole half million person uh, girl guiding movement? Uh, you know, get them bought into it, get them agreeing that digital is a part of their experience, that an online thing is, is going to be as good and as important as their offline experience of going to meetings and, and so on. So this idea of thinking very carefully as you go through this process, who you share ideas and thoughts with as you go, um, you know, I think was probably the most important part in ultimately getting an organisation that, that did, you know, challenge us and have some difficult times in this process to actually sort of agreeing, like, Here's the plan. We're going to go away and execute on it. So those are the sort of things that uh, happened there. You know, in the end, we were able to, uh, you know, to present something and get something signed off. Um, and then off the back of that, start all of the implementation side of things. So, you know, building new websites. You know, both um, both Royal Abbott Hall and uh, Girl Guiding chose that as their first point. Other people chose overhauls of their communications as their first point. Other people, yeah, other people chose overhauls of their sort of governance and structure and, and staff as their first point. Um, uh, you know, and so people are in different places as regards, that, as regards that implementation. I suppose the final thing before I hopefully turn this over to discussion rather than anything else is to just like, really go through some things that I think we try to watch out for when we're doing this and we've kind of come across in the past that have been a bit of a problem. Uh, so the first is overcomplication. I think the very first time we produced a strategy for someone, it was quite a long time ago now, but you know, the assumption was they wanted everything, 
There was, it had to be completely exhaustive. We were never going to stop until we'd kind of covered everything. And this was the most unwieldy and overcomplicated thing in the world. It was, it was too planned, you know, like to go back to the sort of theme of the week, you know. So uh, overcomplication is a huge issue and you should really watch out for it. And when you hear these demands for, um, you know, I want more, 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 you have to work out, are you ready to, uh, number two, sort of offer some resistance and resistance in two ways. So firstly is to hold the line as to what you think the right answer for that, for your organization is but equally to listen and when you hear resistance, to use it to open up a productive conversation rather than to feel attacked or uh, you know, the need to necessarily defend yourselves. I mean, it's one of the you know, sort of primary sort of consultant type uh, um, activities is that you know, in five minutes when this room turns on me and wants to tear me limb from limb, I'm, I'm to accept that uh, and, and try and work out why that is and surface the issues and, and kind of move forward from there productively. So uh, you know, the two sides of the resistance there. Third is, is, is really one of leadership. I mean, um, you know, sort of not quite sure what level everyone here sits at, but one of the real benefits of both Girl Guiding and the Royal Albert Hall is that, you know, the, the people right at the very top of the organisation said, this is the project we want to go with, this is, the, this is the way we want to change our organisation. They delegated to people lower down to actually produce it, but they were so bought in and remain bought in, bought in not just to the strategy itself, but to the beginning of the execution. You know, they're, they're taking on some of these things themselves and showing that kind of um, uh, plan. So, so some of this, you know, with, with um, Royal Albert Hall particularly, has been trying to get people there to, you know, to change themselves a little bit and behave in a way that's a bit more digital so that they can be authentic and convincing as they present to the rest of the organisation. This is important and we're going to make this happen. Uh, four things not involving supporters and users. We have in the past written strategies where organisations have sucked us too much into the organisation and have not given us enough time with the people who are actually going to be served by whatever's produced. It's important, again, to just not think too internally about things. Uh, you know, there are two ways to go on it. Some people go the completely the other way and say we're going to base it completely off user insight. Um, you know, I think you have to sit somewhere in the middle. You have to serve your organisation, but you also have to serve your users. Um, resourcing is really the hardest part of all of this. Like, it's so hard to work out in advance, like, how much time it's going to take, how much money it's going to cost, how many people it's going to need, um, you know, the best you can do is, is to, you know, talk to people, whoever they are, with experience of running similar projects in the past, add all of that up, to get a proper project manager to have a look at it, sequence it all out properly and make sure it all fits together. Uh, you know, the temptation with these things is to be over ambitious, to put in more than you can actually achieve, um, you know, and then find yourself scrambling in the last six months to either tell people you're not going to make it or, um, or killing yourselves. As I said before, two years maximum, I think, uh, any shorter and you're not being, you're not going to set your bar high enough. Any longer you're becoming unrealistic as to what uh, uh, an organisation can, um, can believe about digital. You know, like, we just, you know, things even a couple of years on are quite different to how they were before. Uh, basics come first. Hopefully everyone here has the basics in place already and you can move on to more innovative and interesting things. Um, but it's important to make sure that your platforms are in a really solid shape, that they're you know, suitable for modern technology, that they are serving users you know, reasonably well, uh, and then you can move forward from there. And I think the final point is almost to go back to the first point, which is to say that you don't necessarily need a strategy, provided you're someone that can be strategic, someone that can zoom back, have a look at the wider landscape and say, this project makes sense for where we are right now. Um, you know, if you're in an organisation that accepts that type of thinking and you're a person that can kind of do that, without getting buried in the weeds day to day of your projects and the things that are going wrong and right uh, and all the rest of it. You know, you don't necessarily need this, but I do think it's a equally can be a really important way of just saying, right, OK, here's where we are, here's where we're going. It's a, it's a decent amount of uh, time to be working with and we'll, we'll go from there. So that's the end of the presentation bit.